What is up everyone? In this video, I'm going to show you how to aggregate data in an asynchronous way by using Golang's concurrency model so we can cut down a big portion of our HTTP round trip and make our applications faster. So uh, before, uh, before I continue, if you like the videos I'm providing to you, please consider subscribing to my channel because still 50% of my viewers are not subscribed yet. So subscribe to my channel, leave a question in the comment, give me a thumbs up and jump into the Discord, very important, where I'm providing over 350 people big portion of value so you can become a high value software engineer. So let's get started. So um, let's say, let's say we have a function and we're gonna, um, we're gonna fetch a, a user like this. We're gonna return a string and um, we're gonna mimic an HTTP round trip because we're gonna make some kind, we're gonna mock some kind of application where we are gonna fetch a user from our database and then we are going to enrich the user with some uh, additional data. For example, in this case, we're gonna fetch the user likes, we're gonna fetch a match, and we're gonna basically call these other microservices or the other uh, third-party APIs to aggregate data and enrich our user structure. A very common, um, a very common use case. So what we're gonna do here in this fetch user, we basically could say return, uh, in, in our case, it's gonna be Bob, but we wanna mimic, we wanna basically, um, provide some delay, some HTTP round trip, right? So we're gonna say time um, sleep, time milliseconds, and we're gonna do this, I think, hundreds. It's already a little bit too much, but hey, for the sake of this uh, tutorial. And after the user, if we fetch the user, we're gonna say fetch uh, user likes, right? And we're gonna give the user name. In your case, it could be an ID or something, doesn't really matter, in our case, it's a string and we're gonna return an integer, and we're gonna say return 11, because Bob is not that popular. We're also gonna copy this time sleep, again, because each of these fetch functions are gonna take some time, and we uh, need to replicate that. So we're gonna say fetching the user likes is gonna take 150 milliseconds, and then we are also gonna fetch a user match, right? Because maybe we are making some kind of a Tinder clone where we're gonna fetch the best possible match for Bob, right? So the same thing, we're gonna give a username, and it's gonna be a string, and we are gonna return a string, and we're gonna say here, return, what could be a good match for Bob? Let's say Anna, right? And we're also gonna copy this sleep function, <coughs> paste it in, and in this case, let's say um, 100, 100 for the match, right? So let's say we are, this main function is, uh, classic main function in Golang, but let's say this could be some kind of a HTTP handler, a user calling that, and we fetch uh, the user from the database and, and all that stuff. So we're gonna say, for example, that the user name is gonna be uh, fetch the user like this, then we're gonna say that the likes is gonna be fetch the um, user likes, we're gonna say that the username, and then we're gonna copy this, paste it in, and we're gonna say the match, uh, yeah, match is fine. We're gonna say fetch user match like that. And then we can actually print a len. We're gonna say the likes is gonna be the likes. We're gonna copy this hop and we say that the match is gonna be what's going on here? The match like that. Okay, uh, that's fine. But I also wanna do some measurement, right? We're gonna say that start is gonna be time now, right? And then we're gonna say fmt println, and we're gonna say that uh, took us, uh, and that's gonna, let's do this, let's make it clean, and we're gonna, we're gonna say time since start, boom, boom, and then we say go run main.go like this, bam. And we see, we uh, fetched the likes, we fetched the match from uh, Bob, and then it took us 350 milliseconds, right? Uh, how, why? That's very simple, because we're actually fetching this all synchronously, and it's gonna be 100 times plus 150 plus 100, it's gonna be 350 milliseconds, right? So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna check how we can um, refactor this code. So, 
we can strip down some of the milliseconds, right? We're gonna uh, check if we can do this better. So what do we know is that this fetch user is the first thing we need to do, right? Because we cannot aggregate data if we don't know our user name. So that basically means that we are uh, going to have 100 milliseconds minimum. And then these two functions like this uh, fetch user likes and fetch user match, we can basically spin them up uh, we can schedule them in another go routine and fetch that data asynchronously. But of course, it's going to take time and it's going to take time as long as the weakest link, right? And what is the weakest link? That's basically uh, this 150, right? We cannot be faster than 150, but we can strip down these 100 milliseconds, right? We can make it 100 milliseconds faster than we already have. And that's a huge deal, right? That's a very, very huge deal. So let's do that. <coughs> My bad. So what we're going to do is basically um, in Go, we're going to delete this uh, user likes, uh, this likes uh, variable assignment. And we're going to say go fetch users. And we're going to say go fetch user match. So what basically what Go is going to do is going to schedule this in another Go routine in another. It's not a thread. Maybe it's a green thread, whatever you want to call that. It's just going to schedule it in another routine. Right. The problem is that we, uh, at this point, we have no access to likes or to matches. So that's a big problem, right? So how can we fix that? Well, we can fix that by creating a channel, right? So we're going to say the response channel is going to be make me a channel and we're going to make it a channel of any, right? So that basically means we can put any value inside of this channel. We can write any value inside of this channel. In your case, you could use a response structure or whatever you want. Uh, but in this case, I'm going to solve it with an any type, right? So the next thing what we're going to do is we're going to put this response channel into our functions so we can have actually access and we can write uh, to that channel. So we're going to say response channel like this. We're going to comment this out because it's not working. What's going on? VS Code, please. Like this. And we're going to refactor these functions now, right? So we have fetch user likes. <clears throat> it's returning an int, but in our case, returning is useless. So we're going to delete this return statement. And we're going to say that we have a response channel, which is going to be a chain of any, right? Coming on. A chain of any. And instead of returning 11, what we're going to do is we're going to write uh, 11 into the channel, right? With this uh, syntax. A lot of you guys would probably already familiar with this, but this is how you write values into a channel, right? And what I'm going to do, I'm going to basically uh, buffer my channel. And um, the difference between a buffered and an unbuffered channel is that an unbuffered channel will always block. It will always block until it's uh, get, if somebody is reading from it. And that can cause issues. We all, I'm always basically make buffer channels. Um, and in this case, let's say two, it could be 10. It actually doesn't matter, right? It, it really, really doesn't matter uh, in our case, but let's say two. Um, yeah, you will see why that doesn't matter because we're going to close the channel later on. So it really doesn't matter, right? And if you really want to know uh, more about channels and buffered and all that stuff, I have a video on my channel and I will put that in the description. So you are up to date. Um, yes. So we're going to write into this channel here and we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to say the response channel is going to be a chain of any. And uh, we're going to delete this word and then we are going to assign Anna to our uh, response channel. And uh, that's fine. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to need to read from our channel, right? And in Golang, you can arrange over channels. So you could say something like uh, for response in a range uh, or response channel, right? Like this. And then actually, let me yoink a print line here. Hop, hop. And then we're going to say the response. And then we could do a response here. Delete these two. Um, just like that. I think it's fine. Let's. It's not going to work perfectly fine right now, but I'm going to show you anyway. So we're going to say go run main.go. You can see we have Anna, we have uh, elf likes, but all go routines are asleep and we need to wake them up. No. So basically what happens is that uh, the problem is we are arranging over our response channel, right? And we read two times. 
But it keeps ranging, it keeps waiting for values that are being that that are going to that are being going to <laughs> my my words. It's waiting for input, right? It's waiting for other uh, variables being wrote to the channel or whatever you want to say that. Uh, uh, but nobody's coming. It's just like your GF, right? It's, she's waiting, but she never comes. So that's exactly what happens here. So we need to fix this by closing the channel. That's very important because if we don't close it here, we're gonna have a deadlock, right? So um, how we can fix that is, and by the way, another thing, like you could say, yeah, but uh, this response channel, it's it's basically, it's generic. How can we how can we fix it? Well, you could do something like this, right? If you have a response channel and it's a, it's an any type, you could assert. You could make an assertion on the type. You could say, for example, uh, if it's an int, and in Golang you can check that, right? You could say, for example, likes, uh, okay, and then you could say it's gonna be a response int or something, and if okay, then you know that's an int, right? Something like that, but that's basically off topic. Um, that's off topic, that's something you need to figure out. Okay, so we need to close, and how can we do that? Because uh, it's very simple, actually. We could say just, yo, close me um, the response channel, right? And let's, let's just check what's going on. Go run main.go, boom. And you see, hey, what's going on? Nobody is sprinting, it's 100 milliseconds. That's not what we expected. And <clears throat> the reason why this is happening is because we are closing the channel, but who is guaranteeing us that these guys are already done, right? Nobody, because they are in another scheduled go routine and doing their thing, uh, but nobody knows that you're already done. They are, they are doing work, but you're not done yet, and we already close it. So this basically never gets executed because there is nothing in the channel, and we just took 100 milliseconds because it's um, this guy here that basically also take 100 ms, right? Something like that. So how can we fix that? We need to uh, find a way to synchronize, to have some synergy between um, the whole shenanigans, the whole shebang here. How we're gonna do that is by a sync weight group, right? So we're gonna say the VG weight group. We're gonna say it's a pointer to a sync um, weight group, just like that. And we could say um, VG, at right and and wg at weight group add means that hey we need to wait for one if you do one but you could also do wg add three or four then you need to wait for four calls on wg done and you will see what i mean by that i may i, I maybe make it a little bit too complicated but it's very easy so we're gonna say wg add two why because we have two workers basically two functions that needs to communicate with the weight group uh, telling it that they are done right so we're gonna say wg add two and then we're gonna do our work and then here we're gonna say before we close right before we close the channel we are gonna say wg done wait <laughs> wg wait that basically means that we're gonna add two and this is gonna wait this is gonna basically block until it's gonna block until um we have two wg done calls right so where are, are we going to do the wg done well we're gonna do that in fetch you uh in our in our asynchronous functions in our functions that basically going to do work behind the scenes. So we need to provide another um, variable into our functions, and that's gonna be a weight group, right? We're gonna add a weight group here. So we can actually call them, right? So we're gonna refactor this a little bit more. We're gonna say VG is gonna be a pointer to a sync. Uh, what's going on here? Weight group, just like that. And we're gonna do that the same thing here. VG pointer sync weight group and this vs code I, I scaled it up a big portion so you guys have a nice good view on mobile but it basically one type hint blocks my whole screen but it is what it is hey i'm sacrificing myself especially for you um yes so what we're gonna do if we are done here we're gonna just say vg done you know what i mean you see what i mean that's what i was talking about in the beginning so you're gonna say vg done 
and we're gonna do the same thing here, right? So that basically means each time we call VG DOM, it's going to subtract from this number. And once it's going to zero, then this will unblock, right? And then we can close and then we can do our shebang. Let's see uh, if this is what we need. Go run main.go, boom. And you can see we have NS response. We have um, our 11 user likes for Bob. Unfortunately, only 11. Maybe you need to post some better pictures. I don't know. And it took us 251, 251 milliseconds. And uh, as you remember, in the beginning, it took us 350. Because right now, by doing these two functions in an asynchronous way, we cut down this guy, right? Because we all, like I mentioned before, we always need to wait for the weakest link of our requests. And our weakest link is this fetch users like fetch users likes and we will always need to wait 150 but we also need to wait 100 for fetch users so that basically means we can cut down this guy and decrease our http round trip by 100 milliseconds that's amazing if you can tell that against your project leader lead developer your cto whatever he's going to be very happy right so that's basically a way to um aggregate data in an asynchronous way to do some uh, communication with channels and make sure that we are uh, in a complete synergy with all the states and then we can uh, aggregate and enrich our user struct and send it to the front end right if you like this video please consider subscribing to my channel give me a thumbs up put some questions in the comments join the discord and for the people that really want to level up as a software engineer i also have a patreon page where i'm dropping content, courses, videos that are basically not being found on the whole internet. I'm legit the only one. Thanks for watching and I'm looking forward to see you in one of my live streets, one of my live streams or in one of my future videos. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.